I never thought that a simple EpiPen could cause so much trouble. It all started when my substitute teacher mistook it for something else. Before I knew it, the situation had escalated to the point where I was facing suspension and the teacher was refusing to listen to reason. Here's how it all went down. I was in first period, getting a new EpiPen out of the box so that I could put it in my backpack. The substitute teacher, Karen, had just entered the classroom and was introducing herself to the class. Karen walked over to me and asked me to come with her to the side. She politely asked me to put my meth away and said that I'm not in trouble. Confused, I told her that it's not meth and that it's just an EpiPen, but Karen didn't believe me and said, It's okay, no need to hide it. I'm just happy I caught you so early we can get this drug problem solved. I was starting to get frustrated, but Karen wasn't done yet. I tried to explain to Karen that it was an EpiPen, but she wasn't listening. I don't know what kind of drugs you're on, but I won't tolerate that kind of behavior in my classroom, she said. I was getting more and more frustrated with her. It's not drugs, I said. It's my EpiPen. I have a life-threatening allergy. But Karen just rolled her eyes and said, Yeah, right. You expect me to believe that? I couldn't believe how unreasonable she was being. I'm not making this up, I said, my voice rising. It's a medical device. Please give it back. But Karen just laughed and said, No way. I'm taking this to the principal's office and you're going to be suspended for drug use. I was starting to panic. How could she be so stubborn and clueless? You can't do this, I said. You're making a huge mistake. But Karen just sneered and walked out of the classroom, holding my EpiPen triumphantly in her hand. I started to pull up articles on my phone to show Karen that it was an EpiPen. Look, see, this is what an EpiPen is. It's for people with allergies, I said, showing her the screen. But Karen just shook her head. I don't care what you say. That's meth, and I'm taking it to the principal's office, she said, starting to walk away. I couldn't believe it. I was so angry and frustrated that I just yelled, You're wrong! You're so wrong! How could you be so stupid? Karen stopped in her tracks and turned around, her face red with anger. Excuse me, she said, her voice dangerously low. You heard me, I said, my voice shaking with rage. You're so stubborn and clueless that you can't even admit when you're wrong. You're a terrible teacher, and you have no idea what you're doing. Karen's eyes narrowed, and she took a step toward me. You're going to regret saying that, she said, her voice cold. I'll make sure of it. We stood there for a moment, staring each other down. I was shaking with anger and fear, and I could feel my heart racing in my chest. But I didn't back down. I knew I was right, and I wasn't going to let Karen get away with this. I started to feel defeated. Karen wasn't listening to reason, and I felt like there was nothing I could do. I thought I was going to be in serious trouble. But then, I remembered something my regular teacher had told me. If you ever have a problem with a substitute, go to the principal's office. They'll be able to help you. I decided to take my EpiPen and go to the principal's office. When I got there, I explained the situation to the principal. This is an EpiPen, I said, showing her the device. It's for my allergies, but the substitute teacher thinks it's meth, and she took it away from me. The principal listened patiently to my story and then nodded. I'll take care of it, she said. You go back to class and I'll talk to Karen. I went back to class feeling a little bit better. Karen was still there, but she seemed a little bit more subdued. She didn't say anything to me, and I didn't say anything to her. The rest of the class went by quickly, and soon it was time for lunch. As I was walking out of the classroom, the principal caught up with me. I talked to Karen, she said. She realizes now that she made a mistake. She's very sorry. I didn't know what to say. I was still angry with Karen, but I also felt a little bit relieved that the situation had been resolved. Thank you, I said to the principal. I appreciate it. I never thought my entire world would come crashing down because of my girlfriend's work friends. They thought I wasn't good enough for her, and it seemed like she started to believe them. Before I knew it, she broke up with me out of nowhere. But that was only the beginning. Here's how it all went down. I have been with my girlfriend, Kate, exclusively for five years but on and off for two years before. A lot of my firsts happened with her. We went to each other's prom school dances. We supported each other through tough times. I know Kate is out of my league and I did all I could to make her feel safe and secure. I'm in love with her and wanted a future with her. I went off to college and got a double major, and Kate went into cosmetology school. We were planning to move in with each other in a few months and talked about marriage and children. For the last couple of months, she kept making comments like, My co-workers keep asking why I'm with you. Co-worker name thinks that you're not in my league. My co-workers want me to hang out with them and meet new people. Every time I would ask Kate what she thought, she always said that she loved me and ignored the comments. She told them to stop, but they kept saying these comments made by her co-workers. 
We always had open communication. We talked things out. We haven't had any major issues. We argue over little things such as movies and TV anime shows, food, etc. We don't hide anything. These comments started when she got the job at that salon. She works with all women. She did not cheat or anything. No emotional affairs. No hiding locations. No secret social media. The other night we had a nice date. Had a good after date. When I dropped her off at her place she commented that she was having doubts about our relationship and wanted to break up. I was super confused and didn't say anything. I slowly walked away. I know it was because of her co-workers, the comments they were making and pushing her to leave me, she said so in a message. Less than four hours later she started calling me and texting me saying she was sorry, didn't mean it, that she loves me, and she was stupid for what she said, listening to her new friends. She was going to quit and find a different job. Stop talking to her friends, co-workers. I have not responded to anyone. I'm conflicted. I love her. I have a ring being made for her. Money saved for a house for both of us. We share 85% of our friend groups. The rest are from our jobs. Most of our shared friends have now heard about the breakup and seem just as confused as I am. From some of the messages I have received, it looks like she told them the truth. That her co-workers started to give her insecurities about our relationship, and she stupidly went with it. Her parents tried to reach out to me asking what happened. We are very close. I have been radio silent. Luckily, I can work remotely. I left my apartment yesterday with my laptop and found a nice place with good internet to still do my job. I feel lost. I don't know what I did. I don't know how to feel. I need advice and suggestions. Quick update. After I posted, my boss sent me an urgent message asking if we could do a Zoom meeting. I accepted. When his picture came up, there were two police officers behind him. Apparently, someone, they wouldn't name, asked them to do a wellness check on me. They tried my apartment and no one was there. Then they tried my workplace, but I wasn't there. My boss knew I was actively working remotely and called me. I had to explain I was alright, just had my phone off due to drama. I'm also supposed to go to her parents' house tonight. Update hash 2. We did not have a meeting last night. I rescheduled it for tonight, Friday. Life also has a way of kicking you when you are down. As I was going through my missed calls last night, I got a voicemail saying that my ring would be ready to pick up today, Friday. I also want to apologize for spelling and grammar mistakes. I have not been in my right mind the last few days. Thanks for all the feedback. I will probably update tomorrow or Sunday. The OP left an update. My longtime girlfriend just broke up with me because of her co-workers. They thought I'm not good enough and out of her league. Thanks for the messages and comments. It has been an emotionally draining few days. On Friday, I cleared all my voicemail and texts. I ended up with 61 missed calls, 4 from the police, 14 voicemails, and 417 text messages. I sent a generalized message to those who reached out stating that I was okay and safe, as well as needing time and space while I work out some personal issues. I picked up the ring since it was already paid for, then put it in the box I made for it. I did go to her parents' house. As soon as I pulled up, Kate opened the door and ran out. She had been crying. She went to give me a hug. I accepted, but it wasn't how I usually hug. She then tried to kiss me, and I moved my head and backed up. We went in and sat down. We sat for about 10 minutes not saying anything. She started crying and said she was sorry. I just responded with, okay. I asked her what she told everyone. She said the truth. I asked her why the cops were called to check on me. She explained that she didn't call them. After our friends found out, they tried reaching out. After none of them had heard from me in over 24 hours, they decided to call in the wellness check. Kate used the word catatonic to describe me while after I walked away. I took a bunch of the questions you guys posted. I asked her why did she break up with me. She didn't give me a straight answer. Something about people at work constantly talking badly about me and playing on her insecurities. I asked her why she kept letting that happen and not put a stop to it by setting clear boundaries. She said that she tried and it would work for a day but would go back the next. I asked if she saw value in me as a person or in our relationship. She said that she does in both. I asked why would she break up over something a random stranger said about me. She said she was sorry and it was a dumb mistake, paraphrasing. I asked how did they know about me or our relationship and how much did you, they talk about me. The ladies at the salon overheard Kate talk to some of our friends or customers while she was working about me. Things we did like dates, birthday parties, etc. Did she believe her coworkers were right? She said no. I then followed up with why? She said again she did not know. I asked her if there was someone else. She immediately said no. She has never cheated or been tempted to. She offered me her phone which I declined. I then told her how I felt. Sorry isn't enough. If she wants this relationship, she needs to prove it to me. I didn't care that her co-workers kept talking about us. It's that you listened. It isn't what they said that hurts. It's the fact that you kept listening to it and repeated it back to me. She didn't try hard enough to stop them. It makes me feel like she had to feel the same way to an extent. That is what hurt and damaged the relationship. That her insecurities are what broke my trust. 
I will now always think that this might happen again. She will run off at the next opportunity. She asked why I just walked away. I told her that at that moment just two sentences broke me and made me rethink my life up to that point and the future I was planning with us together. I was growing and making moves for that future. She started crying harder. I felt bad. The next thing I did I regret. I asked her if she knew I was going to propose soon. She said no. I pulled out and showed her the box. I made the box as well. It has two buttons, one that says yes and one that says no. It has lights that say, will you be my life partner? I set it on the table and pressed yes. The box opened, and she started to cry even harder. The ring has both of our birthstones that form the shape of a completed heart with small diamonds surrounding it. The initials and date of our anniversary are laser engraved. I had it made so that it could be added on to if when we had kids. Her parents were there but were more just to make sure things kept civil. Her mom was crying and her dad looked angry but not at me. They both made comments about the ring box. I told her that the future I had planned was not going to happen anymore. We need to give each other space. At least three months of no communication. We need to take a step back and look at who we are and what we want moving forward. After that, we will see where we are at. But this is on my terms and timeline. I can't return the ring, so I don't know what to do with it. I might end up just giving it to her if things don't work out after three months or longer. She said that most of our shared friends told her off and blocked her. Her parents are angry, and her little sister hasn't talked to her since the first night. I said I'm sorry, but actions have consequences. I wished her the best, thanked her parents for all they have done for me and hugged them. I knocked on her little sister's door, I've known her all of her life, thanked her as well, hugged her and left. I have four months left on my lease. I'm thinking of possibly moving when it expires. Tonight I'm hanging out with a good friend, Mr. Johnny Walker, just for tonight. I will get my life going again tomorrow. I don't know if there will be another update or not. The OP ended up leaving the following update. Not sure if anyone will read this but, if things didn't go down the way that they did, I would have asked her to be my wife tonight at midnight. Our first date was on leap day. We would have been married on leap day of next year. Two months later, OP left the new update. Hello world, this is a follow up. I have had many people reach out and ask how I am and for an update. Thank you all for your love and support. To the negative Nancys, sorry if your name is actually Nancy, I hope you stub your toe in the dark one night going to the bathroom. This may be my last update on my situation. I'm going to try to keep things in a timely order. After my last post, I tried getting my life back together. I had limited contact with my ex up until about a week ago, that jumping ahead though. I did like I said I would do. I did some self-reflection, some therapy sessions with my therapist who I have been with for a while, and hung out with friends to get me back on track. It was working too. I got to the point where I wasn't always thinking about Kate all the time. I did feel down about things sometimes, but I was really getting myself back. I also threw myself into my work, but my therapist said it was unhealthy, so I cut back to a more normal schedule. From what I learned about Kate during this time, she was also able to get into therapy. She quit her job and left in a way that burned all bridges to her ex-co-worker's petty island. She has a different job in a different field and is planning to go back to school in the spring. She would ask our shared friends, they did not just drop her and were there for her when she needed them, if they had seen me and how I was. They would usually just say, doing well and living. I actually ran into her a few weeks after the breakup and my heart skipped. She did not look like the woman I knew. She looked defeated and down. She was out with some of her other friends and I could tell she was faking the smile and laughter. She did not see me. It did make me sad to see it. I still have the ring. It is in a safe spot. The box I was able to modify and gave it to another friend to use. She said I should sell it, but I declined. So, overall things were getting better. I was still going to hold firm on the no contact, but life doesn't always happen that way. Several things prevented that. We ended up seeing each other face to face two times, one being her little sister's play for school. I had Pinky promised her I would be there and you can't break Pinky promises. The second was a mutual friend's birthday. We kept our distance but did do some small talk and blended into the environment, but things changed for me and our situation about a week ago. I still don't have much memory of the day, but this is what my friends have told me. For about a month now, I have been getting migraines right behind my eye. It would make my vision blur. Thinking it was nothing and was because of all the stress and events in my life, I ignored it. I was out with two of my friends walking around talking and shopping. I wasn't feeling well but was still having a good time out. They said we were just walking along when I slowed down, wobbled and almost face planted. My friend caught me. I then had a seizure for about a minute. Someone called the medics and I was rushed to the hospital. Long story somewhat shorter. They ran a bunch of tests and it turns out I have a brain tumor. I think it is called a gliomas P that my docs believe they can get out. We are currently waiting for a second opinion. 
I'm still in the hospital and should find out soon when the surgery will happen. My friends called everyone they could, including Kate and her family. She showed up with her family. I miss them. She was the first person I thought about when I woke up and when I heard the news. We have talked very deeply over the past week. She is actually my one guest I'm allowed to have. She is passed out on the uncomfortable seat bed thing they have. I'm not sure what we are. I do still care about her and love her. The plan moving forward is when my lease is up, I'm not going renew it. Her family has invited me to move in and take care of me if things go well. I have accepted their offer after much consideration. I won't be able to drive for a while. I'm honestly scared, but I have a good support team behind me. My affairs are in order for the worst case. Thanks for reading this far. I hope you all have an amazing day slash week slash month slash year slash life. Please do me a favor and tell the people in your life that you care about that you love them and give them a hug for me. You never know what life is going to throw at you. But things changed for me and our situation about a week ago. I still don't have much memory of the day, but this is what my friends have told me. For about a month now, I have been getting migraines right behind my eye. It would make my vision blur. Thinking it was nothing and was because of all the stress and events in my life, I ignored it. I was out with two of my friends walking around, talking and shopping. I wasn't feeling well but was still having a good time out. They said we were just walking along when I slowed down, wobbled and almost face planted. My friend caught me. I then had a seizure for about a minute. Someone called the medics and I was rushed to the hospital. Long story somewhat shorter. They ran a bunch of tests and it turns out I have a brain tumor. I think it is called a glioma, SP, that my doctors believe they can get out. We are currently waiting for a second opinion. I'm still in the hospital and should find out soon when the surgery will happen. My friends called everyone they could, including Kate and her family. She showed up with her family. I miss them. She was the first person I thought about when I woke up and when I heard the news. We have talked very deeply over the past week. She is actually my one guest I'm allowed to have. She has passed out on the uncomfortable seat bed thing they have. I'm not sure what we are. I do still care about her and love her. The plan moving forward is when my lease is up, I'm not going to renew it. Her family has invited me to move in and take care of me if things go well. I have accepted their offer after much consideration. I won't be able to drive for a while. I'm honestly scared, but I have a good support team behind me. My affairs are in order for the worst case. Thanks for reading this far. I hope you all have an amazing day slash week slash month slash year slash life. Please do me a favor and tell the people in your life that you care about that you love them and give them a hug for me. You never know what life is going to throw at you. Mini update. I'm being moved to a better hospital that has the doctor they asked the second opinion of. He is one of the top rated surgeons in the area. Surgery should be happening maybe Tuesday. Things have been rough. I had some side effects again from the brain tumor. I'm going crazy slowly. I can't do anything without someone with me or helping me. I feel like this room is getting smaller. The only thing that has helped is friends coming by quickly or just checking in. My boss has been cool. He has promised my job is going nowhere and is helping on his side of things with insurance slash leave slash disability. Kate's sister made me promise I would be okay. I'm afraid of breaking that promise. Thank you all again. Wow, what a roller coaster of emotions. It's heartbreaking to hear about how the OP's girlfriend was influenced by her co-workers and how that led to their breakup. It's also heartwarming to see how much the OP still cares for her, even after everything that has happened. And now, with the diagnosis of a brain tumor, it's truly a time of uncertainty and fear. My thoughts and prayers are with the OP and his loved ones. I never thought I'd see the day when my 19-year-old sister would marry her 36-year-old high school teacher. I tried to warn my family, but no one would listen. Now, one year later, I'm sitting in my car outside their house with a plan to save my sister. Here's how it all went down. My younger sister is getting married to her 36-year-old high school teacher in a few days, and everyone seems okay with it. She graduated a year ago, and they told us they were dating almost immediately after graduation. I was shocked and angry, but everyone around me was happy and supportive of them. The teacher divorced his wife two years ago and started paying attention to my sister. He spoke to her after class regularly and paid special attention to her studies. I thought this was weird and talked to my sister about it, but she told me he was helping her because she was the best student in her class, which she was. A few months ago, only a few months into their relationship, they announced that they were engaged. I tried talking to my parents about their age difference and other concerns, but they didn't want to hear it. I talked to my sister, and she told me she is happy and loves him. We live in a small town with a close-knit community, and everyone else is supporting their marriage. I'm feeling useless right now, and I am angry at myself. I was unable to protect my sister, and I feel like I failed my duties as an older sibling. I hate everyone around me. How do they not see what's going on here? 
The OP left an update. The marriage happened. I contemplated not going to the ceremony, but I didn't want to hurt my younger sister, so I went reluctantly. My blood was boiling though throughout the whole thing. Everyone who came to the ceremony congratulated them. I couldn't even look the teacher in the face because I was so angry at him. I hated the whole thing. I'm leaving this town tomorrow. I had some interviews lined up and got selected in one. It's in a city and I'm moving tomorrow. I can't stand these people. My parents think that getting married to a good guy with a stable job is the best thing that could have happened to my sister and my relatives agreed. He groomed her. Why doesn't anyone else see that? I wanted to scream at everyone. When I told my sister I was leaving, she cried. I reassured her and told her that I wasn't angry at her. I made it clear to her that she could contact me anytime under any circumstances and that I'd be there for her. I bought her a phone and told her that I'd talk to her regularly. I tried to not antagonize anyone because I want them to reach out to me if anything happens. It was very hard to do. I came very close to fighting several people. My sister was a star student. I always thought that she would go to a big college and become someone significant. But now, she's going to be a housewife. That thought is destroying me. I wasn't harsh on her because I'm hoping that she wakes up soon, and I want to be there for her when that happens. I want to support her and see her full potential, and I'm wishing it happens soon. A commenter asked about the OP's advice to her sister regarding not having children. The OP replied, I told her not to have children until she's sure. She has a contraceptive implant and I told her not to get it removed for at least a couple of years. I told her to tell me if anyone ever pressured her to have it removed. I really hope she follows my advice. The OP also addressed the comments defending the teacher's actions. People like you are the problem. She was groomed since she was 16. Why can't you people see that? I wouldn't have any problem with her choices if she wasn't coerced into them. Him being an older man isn't my issue here. Him being her teacher is. Also, I don't think that being a housewife is bad. What I don't like is that the choice of something more is being taken away from my sister. Lastly, the OP explained why she bought her sister a phone. As for the phone thing, my parents did not allow my sister to own a phone. She had to use the landline if she wanted to talk to people. That's why I bought her a phone. The OP gave another update, one year later. I wanted to share an update on my sister's situation since it's been a year, and the situation has changed significantly in a positive way. Since the marriage a year ago, I've made it a point to talk to my sister regularly on the phone that I gave her. A few weeks in, her husband started pushing her to be in a traditional wife role, which created a wedge between her and her friends, but I made sure to keep in touch and to visit her once every month. Her husband did not like that, but he tolerated it to keep up appearances. To deal with my frustrations, I joined a gym and started working out. Luckily, my boss at my job turned out to be a great lady who listened to me and gave me a lot of support and advice. She told me I could call her when I needed help and became my mentor and an older sister I could lean on while also paying me well. Some months into the marriage, her husband managed to domesticate her completely. She stopped going out almost entirely and had very little independence, and he tried to start separating my sister from me. However, because I kept a good and consistent relationship with her, he wasn't able to do it. A couple of months ago, he started hinting to my sister about wanting kids, but I kept repeating to my sister that she should not have children until a few years into the marriage. Last month, he told her directly that he wanted children, and my sister told him that she wanted to wait. He started pressuring her to get her contraceptive implant removed. So last week, I went back home to talk to him. I always try to be polite to him whenever I visit their home so that he doesn't have any ammo to try to separate us. During conversation I brought up that he was pressuring my sister to get her contraceptive implant removed. It escalated into an argument with him saying that he had a right to have children with his wife. When I didn't back down, he got frustrated and took a swing at me, which didn't connect properly. I didn't hesitate in punching him back in his face. He fell backward and started howling in pain. I wanted to do that since this whole ordeal started, and it was satisfying. I think him hitting me was my sister's wake-up call. He called the cops and told them that I assaulted him. Fortunately, I make sure to record everything whenever I visit their home. I use my Apple Watch for this, and it's a great tool for stealthy audio recording. I called my boss and told her about what happened, and she promised to send a lawyer just in case. When the cops arrived, my sister took my side, which surprised her husband. With me being a woman, and with the recording, the cops also took my side. The lawyer arrived after that, and I told her husband that I was taking my sister with me. He tried to protest, but the lawyer warned him that I would press charges if he stopped my sister from leaving. He reluctantly let her go, and she has been staying with me for the last week. My parents were furious when they found out that my sister left her husband. They did not seem to care that he hit me, 
probably because I stopped talking to them. I am still talking to my sister about what she wants to do and will probably start divorce proceedings in a few days. Her husband and my parents have been trying to call and get her to come back, but I've made sure that she doesn't talk to them without me present. Throughout the whole thing, my boss has been super helpful and has been giving my sister advice about what she could do next. I know that I'm super lucky that my sister managed to wake up so soon and that I've had support from people like my boss. Throughout the whole of last year, I was worried about how my sister was going to end up, but I am elated now. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out another video on your screen now. Submit your own stories at you'rethejerk.com. Subscribe now or you're definitely the jerk.